So I can't quite believe that we're almost at the end of 2022 and I think it's certainly been the year of high-end ultra premium active noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones. So we've recently looked at the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 which are £599 here in the UK. I really liked those, go and check the video out if you haven't seen it already. We've also had the even more expensive £1,000 Mark Levinson number 5909. Now I've not heard those yet, unfortunately my budget doesn't quite stretch to, to, to those, um, but they've been very well received and there are plenty of other review videos on those. And then we've had these. These of course are the Focal, French company, so French pronunciation, Focal Batisse. And these are Focal's first attempt at a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And these start at £699. Start, start and finish, because there's only one price, £699 in the UK. I did really like the £600 Bowers & Wilkins PX8. So what do I make of these, which are £100 more? Can they compete both in terms of sound quality, which is obviously the most important thing, as well as all the other features? Well, let's have a good look at them. So if you have watched the PX8 video, you'll know that I evaluated those in three domains. First of all, we had the design, build quality and comfort. Secondly, we had the technology features such as battery life, app, Bluetooth connection, noise cancelling, all that kind of stuff. And then thirdly, and most importantly, of course, we had sound quality. So it's only fair that we apply the same criteria to the Focal Batisse. So let's start with the design, build quality and comfort. Now these are a very different and slightly quirky pair of headphones and some of you might feel particularly self-conscious with these on your head. Uh, there are very deep ear cups and this very distinctive pattern on the faceplate of the, of the uh, ear cup which yeah certainly make you stand out. There are also annoyingly these LEDs behind the Focal logo here. Now thankfully you can turn them off in Bluetooth mode and I was very quick to do that. They will draw a lot more attention to you I think than the PX8s which look much more understated and I far prefer the design for my taste anyway of the px 8 In terms of materials you get a mixture of aluminium and magnesium for the metal elements. You get some really nice premium feeling leather uh, over the lovely deep ear cups and you get suede on the underside of the headband leather on top look. You do however also get some plastic elements which kind of lowers the overall feel of the uh, headset so it doesn't feel quite as premium as the PX8. Uh, in terms of comfort uh, these do feel pretty comfortable. At first I thought they weren't as comfortable as the PX8 which remember had that lovely soft Nappa leather on the headband and the ear cups and at first I thought that these might be causing a bit of pressure on my crown but having worn them for extended periods over the past two or three weeks I actually find them to be fairly comfortable now. I don't get sweaty ear syndrome. There's a surprising amount of ventilation there for closed backs. I think most people are going to find these comfortable. The only thing I'd say is if you've got a really big head, these don't extend very much. But I personally find them really comfortable and they fit really well. So yeah, big thumbs up for me for comfort. Design and build quality, not quite as good as a PX8, but still pretty good. Oh, you do get a nice hard case with them and they fit really well in there. So they don't jiggle around in your bag. And as you can see, there is a compartment to put the cables in as well. So let's get on to the second aspect, which is technology. And you can connect these in either Bluetooth mode or wired in DAC mode because there is that um, switch there for putting them into DAC mode. Now what DAC mode means is that you can hook these up directly via the USB-C port which is also used for charging to your device be it a phone, laptop or iPad and then you can take advantage of lossless transmission and decoding by the internal DAC on these headphones and that's capable of 24-bit, 192 kilohertz decoding. Doesn't do DSD or MQA, but who cares about those anyway? Not me, some of you do. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, but I don't care about that. I just want good CD quality. And if you put it into DAC mode, you will get that. Now, of course, most of you are not gonna do that. You're gonna buy these to use them as Bluetooth headphones. 
and thankfully the Bluetooth connectivity is excellent and solid even in congested areas. We get support for SBC, AAC and Aptex. What you don't get similarly to the PX8 is LDAC but look I'm not that hung up about codecs and these sound equally good either via AAC or um, Aptex. Now I'm not sure whether it's placebo or not because I'm always skeptical of these things but I thought they sounded even better in DAC mode. However, they sound really good in Bluetooth mode anyway and you know if you're not bothered about DAC mode don't worry because most of what I'm going to talk about in sound quality applies to Bluetooth mode and you know you get just that additional 10% of sound quality maybe if you if you use them in wired DAC mode. Uh, you get USB cable in the box obviously you also get a 3.5 mil jack to USB-C adapter but you cannot use these passively so if you leave them turned off and plug them into your DAP using the 3.5 mil cable you'll get zero sound which I think is a real shame because eventually the battery on these is going to die hopefully not for a few years but it will die it will hold less charge and then die and then what you've got is a very expensive paperweight unless for Cal offer battery replacements but anyway talking about the battery you do get 30 hours of battery life um, which is again comparable with PX8 you get some quick charging features which allows plenty of juice after a quick charge let's talk about noise cancelling next and these are a little bit different from the PX8 in that regard so with the PX8 you could either have noise cancelling off noise cancelling on or transparency but here there is no noise cancelling off mode what you get is full noise cancelling soft noise cancelling and transparency now I've found full noise cancelling to actually be pretty good it's nowhere near as good as the likes of the Bose QC45s or the Sony 1000XM5s you don't get that sense of utter isolation however it's really pretty good um, so it allows you to listen to music at lower volumes in crowded environments and actually sometimes particularly in places like airport lounges where I do want to have a little bit of awareness of what's going on around me I found that these are pretty acceptable let's talk about the app next and you know all these headphones come with their companion apps and thankfully the Batisse app is quite good once you get past the initial setup it's a combined app which both name products and Focal products use and you have to swipe onto the Focal screen before you'll see the option to pair with your Batisse but the pairing was pretty straightforward and once you're in you can change the EQ you actually get a five band graphic equalizer not parametric and that's better than what you get on the PX8 you get support for firmware updating and you also get to turn those pesky LED lights out although interestingly if you use these only in DAC mode the light stays on the whole time and people think you're a uh, kind of a pubescent teenager with a gaming headset on now then let's get on to the most important aspect of our review which is the sound quality and I'll say it straight out the gate these are the best Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones that I've ever heard not that I've heard huge numbers of them but I've heard some good stuff as you'll know if you've been watching the other videos these are better for example than the mid-rangers like the Sony's and the Bows and Wilkins PX7's uh, and even the Sennheiser Momentum 4's which I might do a video on let me know if you'd like to see that now when it comes to comparing them with their high-end competitors I think it's hard to, to say one is clearly better than the other all I can say is which ones I prefer uh, more and I do prefer the Batiste to the Bowers and Wilkins PX8 as I said I haven't heard the 5909s maybe I'd like those even more but between the PX8 and the Batiste I prefer the Batiste how are they different well I think the striking differences are in the degree of detail that you get which is much higher with the Batiste than it is with the PX8 now the PX8s are not muddy in any way but they have this kind of gentle smoothing effect so you don't get the sharp edges and definitions uh, from good recordings whereas the Batiste are really good at detail retrieval you really do notice some nuances the other thing that's really noticeable is the expansive sound stage that you get which is really very impressive and very immersive for a pair of closed back earphones not just Bluetooth but any closed back earphones you really get a much wider sound stage than the PX8 and that's fantastic if you're listening to large-scale orchestral music for example you get a much 
more realistic sense of scale. You get great imaging and layerings of the orchestra from front to back. And that's true even if you're listening to a much smaller scale thing like a rock band. I would characterize a sound signature as being pretty neutral, but with a bit of warmth in the mid bass and some really nice sweet treble extension. These are not fatiguing, they're not shouty. And in fact, if you look at the frequency response graphs, I believe there's a bit of a dip around the one kilohertz region, which I think just stops these from sounding too in your face and shouty. There's a lovely natural timbre to both instruments and vocals. And I think these are particularly good with female vocals. So I've been loving uh, the likes of Taylor Swift, Kate Bush, all that on these. They're also quite nice with low male growly vocals. They're, they're, they're just good. I think these sound substantially better at lower volume levels than the PX8s do. Now then, music-wise, I've got a few things to demonstrate how good the, uh, the Batisse are. So this, I'm sure you're all aware, is uh, REM's 1992 classic, Automatic for the People. I know it's kind of music that boring old middle-aged men like me listen to, but it is beautifully recorded and the first track, Drive, really sets the tone for the album. It's a very sombre track and starts off with Peter Buck's kind of mournfully strummed acoustic guitar and then you get Michael Stipe's heavily reverbed um, vocals. And I have to say, you really get a sense of how good the Batisse are with those transients, you know, the, 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 the strumming of the guitar comes through really beautifully. And Michael's vocals are just delicate and beautifully poised in the mix. Next, we've got this uh, Blur's 1994 album, Park Life, perhaps the pinnacle of, of Britpop, um, that much maligned subgenre that I grew up with. Now, the first track on this album is Girls and Boys, and it's got this really bouncy, propulsive bass line, courtesy of Alex James. Now, Alex James, a bass player from Blur, who is a phenomenal bassist, um, after Blur uh, finished up, he became a farmer and, in fact, I think uh, makes cheese. He's a, he's a well-renowned, prize-winning cheese farmer. So if that isn't a career change, I don't know what is. But anyway, I digress. Girls and Boys, great bouncy bass line, which really kind of gives the track energy. And if you want to appreciate that beautiful kind of warm mid-bass, I think this track demonstrates it beautifully. It really got my feet tapping. Now, in terms of the bass, there isn't as much bass here as there is on the PX8. If you're a bass head, I think you'll prefer the PX8, which has got much more sub bass. Yeah, I mean, the bass on the PX8 is, is, is really kind of warm and gooey, but I prefer the bass on the Batiste. I think it's more agile. I think the impact is a little bit stronger. And yeah, I do like that little bit of mid-bass warmth, which doesn't bleed into the mid-range. So yeah, Park Life, fantastic. Reminded me of my youth. 1994 was a good year for music. And here is Veruca Salt's first album, American Thighs. Um, Veruca Salt came in towards the tail end of the grunge years, but this is a phenomenally good album. And the reason I mention this album is because it demonstrates another great feature of the Batiste, which is the way it handles dynamics. So remember, dynamics are the variation in volume over a track, and grunge in general, in fact, went from whisper quiet to ear-shatteringly loud. So the track 25 has a really quiet build up before exploding into life towards the end. I think the way that the Batiste handles those macro dynamics over the course of the whole song, as well as micro dynamics in individual phrases, is, is really classy and surprisingly good for, for Bluetooth cans. And remember, I've done most of this listening over Bluetooth rather than DAC mode. And here we've got a really excellent album that's quite hard to get hold of these days, which is Trenta Muller's Chronicles. It's a two CD package and Trenta Muller is uh, a Danish uh, dance music producer. He's produced some great solo albums, but this is a compilation. So CD1 is basically a set of tracks that were originally singles and EPs. And CD2 is a collection of Trenta Muller's remixes of other people's uh, work. So probably one of my favorite tracks on here is track one from CD2, which is a remix of Roiksop's What Else Is There? Now that's a track off Roiksop's second album, The Understanding. And in its original form, it's very mellow um, with some lush instrumentation and some wispy vocals. It, it's great, but 
I prefer Trenton Miller's version, which strips all that kind of fancy stuff off, and instead what you get is a really solid, pro propulsive beat with some hard-edged synths, and this is where that detail retrieval and timbre comes in on the Batiste. You get a real kind of kick with the, with the bass, and then a really kind of visceral sense of the synths as they cut in, and then the vocals are kind of pushed more to the fore than they are on the original version, and you know, on cheap headphones, the whole effect can be a bit jarring, a bit toothachey, a bit grainy, but on the Batiste, it just sounds brilliantly balanced and exciting and just, just great. So yeah, there you have it, £699, £700 is a lot of money to spend on any headphones. And some of you will argue, probably quite reasonably, that no Bluetooth cans are worth that money, but I think the Batiste are as close to being worth it as you can get. And for my personal preferences, once I've got past the dorky looks that still make me feel a bit self-conscious wearing these out and about and the silly gamer LEDs, the sound quality is enough for me to want to keep these. I'm absolutely delighted to award these the Audio Fixation Gold Award, the much coveted Gold Award. These are probably the best pair of headphones I've tested this year. And if you've got the money and you want to go Bluetooth but still have the option of the DAC mode, these are a very, very solid recommendation. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like the stuff I do, then consider subscribing to the channel. It's really helpful. Thank you for all your support throughout 2022. And hopefully we'll be making more great videos next year. But anyway, take care. Have a fabulous Christmas, all of you. And I'll see you soon.